So, we are back and um, <clears throat> I've wanted to do this video for quite a while now um, and I wanted to produce a video which is it's about the creative process, the thoughts and um, the actions that go towards making an album from early inspiration to basically how it's produced and recorded but um, I'm more interested in that how you are initially inspired or how artists are initially inspired and how that's carried on throughout that whole process of making music and at the end of it hopefully or certainly in my case to produce an album of a set of songs that are related so um, yes that's what this video is about um, so 10 campfire songs is the next album uh, and it is really, I suppose if I had to title this, I would say that it's mapping the evolving creative process of an album, of producing an album. Um, this is not how anyone else does it, other than this is me, this is how I do it. And I, and I thought that insight might be either provocative or just of, of interest possibly to other artists or people who simply enjoy listening to music um, and uh, yeah so that's what this is about and I want to go back to the beginning so this is 10 campfire songs um, I've sort of started to collect pieces of music but um, I just want to mention that uh, years ago, um, I guess we were into the sort of early inspiration. Um, years ago, I remember watching a documentary series on TV which explored how some of the best or most well known, uh, best or most well known um, albums were recorded. I think the I think the program was called Classic Albums, and. Uh, I was very interested to see how famous bands who seemed so untouchable and took on an almost elite mantle because they were seen on TV from simple people like myself, um, it was how these geniuses worked and where their inspiration came from. Now of course, as you get older you realise that actually it's, it's, it comes from quite a... Uh, uh, um, it's not necessarily that sort of sparkly dust that only a few people have. I think a few people do have that extra special thing. I would not want to call it genius, but just have this a mixture of ability to be able to produce fantastic albums um, through, almost through design. But where does the inspiration come from? How do they start? How do you kick it off? And also, how do you maintain it over the years? Um, so these were the things that I was very much interested in as a uh, a young struggling <clears throat> musician struggling with my skills and why is it I can't seem to be able to write a song and everyone else can um, that type of attitude um, and this sort of, anyway this program classic albums was looking into the private world of writing and recording and it made me realise that there really are no rules to writing um, or producing anything at all, not really. The no rules view should be the way we go forward to retain an individual sound as well. Um, because I believe that the more we use the same sounds, the more we share the same software, also called apps, go-to techniques, the more likely it is that we end up all sounding the same. And we need to bear that in mind when we're using all these easy access technologies 
I'm not saying reject them, I think they're really useful, but you almost have to break them or use them in the way that you want to use them. Don't just take them out of the box and go, that's it, that's how I'll read the manual. Oh, yes, that's what it does. Always experiment, always try to break it. And I think by doing that, you then can possibly create your own sonics, your own style. Um, now, certainly there, there are better ways to record and manage your time, but the angst and sweat needed to, to shape an idea is still a key requirement, along with perseverance. And that requires, firstly, a, I think, um, a love of what you do. Uh, secondly, having the freedom to find or unlock your own best practice, wherever that is and whatever it is. Your own rules and your own working methods are yours, and they will, I believe, give you some sense of original style or at least help towards it and ultimately you have to have some confidence of knowing that somewhere and it might be just out of touch there's really some good music in you that you need to get out if you can only just grasp it and focus on it and of course focus is the other part we don't we should stop play acting being what a pop star or a rock star is goat you know can only write when induced with drugs or whiskey um, while those things might be useful it it might unlock something but it really does lock down your potential and we've seen that with a lot of famous people who are good writers and artists who are no longer with us um, but anyway, I don't want to don't want to go on to that area. That's that's really sort of the, a larger picture of what what's going on in a person's life. And this is just an aspect of writing, which is part of that as well. But I don't want to go into the sort of personal lives of of people. So I think it's, I think that it's, it's because of this that I have respect this idea for professional producers and studios because they have to work with anyone who pretty well walks through their door unless they're well known and they can just pick and choose and they need to find a way of working with an artist whether they like them or not whether they necessarily like the music or not um, and that's a, that's a two-way relationship, of course. The artist needs to be able to work with a producer and with an engineer and with a studio. So there is that relationship that's important. And um, that's the machinery, that you go into the machinery and you produce your artistic, creative goods um, very often that way. And I think more and more now, people are find, finding that there is a safe haven, a safe place. They can actually produce something in, in the rooms of their own houses like this. Um, or in a shed at the bottom of the garden with digital equipment that's broadcast quality. And then take it into a studio and then it can be manipulated and refined and changed or whatever needs to happen to it. So I think a lot more people are finding that they can they're recording in isolation or with small groups of people um, to their own rules and that, that way of working that's the thing that I'm interested in I know how I do it and sometimes it changes but I wonder how other people do it is it the same is it is, ri is it rigid is it very loose is it wait until inspiration happens how, how what is it that that makes it all work the seed of, for the creative start of something, or rather the inspiration for anything creative, is probably one of those most misunderstood and badly lit experiences, I think. And that's why I, I want to do this video. Um, and it will be, I guess, certainly not a rant this time, but it will be a, a bit of a babble to many. 
uh, and that's okay. I make it clear that um, some of these things are are over long. Um, some of the videos, and um, maybe that's done by design. Who knows? So anyway, we can all be inspired by many things in many different circumstances. Inspiration can be uh, standing under a tree while the wind blows, you know, through the leaves above you. Maybe you do a bit of photography and you try and capture those moments. It could be a quiet moment on your own or, or with a group of, of friends or people. It could be a line from a book or seeing someone in a public space doing something that's odd or interesting. It could be fueled, as I said before, by intoxication or love, grief, sadness, happiness, the freedom of riding a motorbike. Those were the days. Uh, or the moment you see your first frozen sea and you stand on the beach and you can't believe the sort of crystalline carpet. Amazing. It may come from other music you hear. Very often it does. Or an instrument that you've never heard before has a particular quality that just stays with you. Um, perhaps it's tr triggered by sound that stays with you for later reference, like an earworm. <clears throat> so inspiration comes at you from many different sources, and that's certainly what it does to me. Sometimes I can wake up and hear a complete song or jam in my head. Very often they get lost, but sometimes I'll work them into a track and they just stay with me. Um, it's the things that sort of stick in your head. I keep hearing it, well, maybe with a variation of bass or melodies, and, and, and so when I put it down, it becomes a thing rather than just a thought. So these are the things that, that I can catch and put down if I'm near a studio equipment such as this. Um, I've tried recording these new ideas sometimes, um, but they don't make sense without a fully imagined music behind it. It's kind of a bit like when someone says, oh, you know that tune, and they hum or sing something, and without music you go, no, nope. unless it's really obvious and really current, it kind of doesn't sound like anything. Um, so I'd like to start with, for this album, capturing and expanding the creative elements. So for the songs themselves, when ideas start, and if they come in, come in a number of variations, i.e. You know, plurally, I just need to get them down in a rough form as quickly as possible, and as many as I can. Um, you see, I can't read or write music, so I can't just put down what I hear. I have to physically do it um, and, and that's why I have my mobile phone where I would just have chords and ideas which has been brilliant that's been my go-to diary um, pretty well for the last whew, six seven six years maybe that, that I've, I've specifically used a mobile phone for that with a, with a camera <clears throat> um, so that's been very useful. And so as long as I can capture the spirit or the essence of an idea and get it down, nothing else matters at this point. And it's that learning to open and pour the tap of inspiration into a receiving an open mind. That's the key. Um, it really is a uh, you know, make hay when, while the sun shines moment. Um, so once I... I have a basket full of ideas, I can then set about picking them apart and making sense of them. Um, they then become the foundation of whatever might come next. Um, as I mentioned previously, uh, I've always been interested in how other musicians and songwriters put their music together. Um, to understand where the points of inspiration were and how the music making part evolves over time. So how much of the outside world influences the whole process I guess depends on you. 
Um, so for me, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of less interested in the techniques and the core production process of recording and mixing. Um, I much prefer the free fall and wild meanderings of the whole process. Um, it's like having to tame something. Uh, sometimes it's hidden. Uh, sometimes it's inside you and, and you, you need to get it out. And other times it lurks behind an instrument possibly or a sound or it presents itself briefly somewhere in the real world outside that controlled boundary of the studio. And it's being in whichever form it is, whatever way you can capture it, that's that's the that's what you need to do initially. Um, so taking on a style, that's another thing. For this particular project, I wanted to produce an album with a different feel to the previous two. I wanted it to be simpler, um, calmer, more acoustic, definitely. Um, and um, one of the ways I might achieve this is to limit the instruments that go into recording. Um, I, I, I figured that was a, a sort of fair way of looking at it. So um, I also wanted to incorporate and use real world natural sounds into the music. I, I'd kind of done that for, for quite a few years. Um, pretty well forever actually um, at, but I felt that um, in this instance I particularly wanted it to have a more outdoorsy forest feel I wanted to relate to the, the, the idea of camping somewhere or hiking um, and that leads me on to that inventing a theme for it because I like to link all the tracks together. I don't just want disparate tracks. I've got a bunch of songs and they all mean different things and then I produce an album. It's just simply the way that I, I work. I, I kind of like to glue them all together so there's some sort of loose narrative. They're related in some way. Um, so my intention then is to put a collection of, for want of a better term, campfire songs, which in truth aren't really meant to be recognised as that. Um, I also wanted to place the album within a physical, natural space, such as a wooded area or forest, and in addition to that, I had thoughts that somewhere within that forest or space, perhaps there was, or I could place the listener possibly you, as an occasional onlooker and a voiced character directly into that environment. So possibly some of the songs that are about that person or the song that person is thinking in the song. Um, now that person or character might be there for a number of reasons, be it by design or so hiking or accident, they're lost. Um, and they could be lost in two ways, of course, that brings up another idea, you know, are they actually physically lost or are they lost in their head? Um, so, yeah, it's not clear to me which I prefer and which I might use. They're, they're both open, I think they're both strong ideas. Um, for the tracks themselves, well, as I said, I searched through my mobile phone video archive and pulled out ideas that kind of hung together. Um, then I started re-recording some of them into Logic uh, with drums, some without, uh, with a, f a few sounds that I put in um, and came up with a number of different musical sections and melodies or rhythm structures that I liked and that it, it just built up over that. So one initial idea on a mobile phone, when I actually rewrite it, work out the chords and I, I and I always put my stuff in a in a book. And I have all my chord sheets. And I write down with little notes. Um, and to be able to remember those I, I give it a name and I'll come back to that. That idea of titling things. Because without that I'm lost. Um, so anyway, I re-record some stuff and, and from the one idea on a mobile phone I might get three or four variations in Logic. So that's great. It's splitting apart. 
and giving me more ideas. Um, these rough demos, I've got about 20 possibly so far, they form the foundation of whatever comes next. So the overall theme or the journey takes shape um, and I usually start to retitle these ideas because I have so many of them. Um, and uh, the titles very often are just plucked out of the air or they might just quickly make me think of something that's relevant and I'll use that for the title. Um, so uh, the overall theme or journey takes shape and then I retitle those track ideas possibly as a way of saying oh, maybe you know, this one is quiet so maybe this is sort of a person's camping and they're just thinking about things they're reflecting on things so you know I might I might call it midnight tent or uh, a, a peaceful night something like that and it gives me a sense of what it's about but also I can remember and I can use the title in my chord book peaceful night ah I know that's they're the chords for that track that's just how I how I do it um, now after that what I do is I that really as you can hear starts to develop a story or a narrative and I, I just love that I, I love stories anyway and and uh, I suppose it's a very sort of it's um it's a way of helping me to write as well um, because I, I don't while I don't feel I have a big book in me I have lots of little short stories and they tend to come out as uh, such as this project as a short story which are bound together by uh, songs <clears throat> so the music and ideas within these tracks along with the titles allow me to put the themes or ideas together now for instance I've had a track which I've labeled uh, and then the fire went out uh, the rough music I put down um, had a quality I interpreted as a uh, parting or leaving something. I had that at the end, and I figured that's where it should go. This is like a, so. This is the end of the album. This is the end of the journey, possibly. Um, it also hints at a primeval fear of darkness and of being alone. I think, and I want to wind that in there a little bit. Um, I suppose if it was a film sequence, it would be a, uh, let's see, um, I, I imagine a camera pulling back up through, or a drone camera, pulling back up through the trees of the forest and revealing just across the way a hidden road. You're leaving the hiker, they're looking up or they're travelling forward and they don't know the road's there, but as the drone goes up, it it, there's a road in the distance and this person's heading towards it and so I guess that's that's quite nice because that means they're going from some journey where they they were on their own back into society just just I really just really like the ideas um, and sometimes the, the ideas for the songs or the piece of music hit me as a as a film and I'm sure it does this with a lot of people I'm sure people see um, music they see the real world in music um, there are some beautiful pieces of um, uh, classical music which I probably should know what they are which are written to have the undulation of waves and the sea in them uh, and that's exactly what you get when you listen to them you get that feeling that you're either on a boat or you're on the sea somewhere and um, and I think there's that's that that carries on with us we do not only do we invent those things for ourselves um, but that is also um, how we it helps us to sort of create the music to be more than it is we visualize it so, um, so yeah. That anyway. That was the idea. Uh, so, so the tracks don't themselves don't strictly fall within the confines of camping, but um, that thing can be used as a metaphor for a starting point for each story, which still binds them together with the idea of um, possibly uh, reclusiveness, nature, feeling lost, camping itself, the forest. Um, 
survival or just a quiet place where you have an abundance of time to think. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I kind of like that. I feel that's quite strong. Um, track titles to help push a meaning. The track titles are put in there to help me remember which bits of music, as I've said. Um, so this helps me to categorise the whole of the music. And it, it gives me ideas for the music as well. Um, so I, I, I think the first thing was um, I had a sort of complete idea that came out of a nonsense vocal which forced me to associate the nonsense words with real words. I thought I heard me saying something and, and actually I wasn't. I was just gobbledygook. And um, that became red light, blue light. Uh, it quickly filled in a musical gap so that I could, there's a, some words that would fit in here that would sound like this. Uh, and it's a great way to be able to gather and build inspiration as well. It's another way. Um, words that just come into your head as you're singing. Um, so the list of titles I've got so far, and I'm sure this will change, and I've reordered them several times and they have a nice feel to them. The first track will be A Pin Dropped, then I've got A Peaceful First Night, then Red Light, Blue Light, Lazy Summer, which is an old, a very old song of mine from the 80s that I've re resurrected, um, Woken Broken, the f uh, the second peaceful night, and Liberty She Blew, Soul Burn, The Bewilder Retreat, Moon Jug Train, um, and then the fire went out is at the end, but I've also got All That You Carry and Long Journeys in Small Cars. Some, are, some of these tracks are going to get wiped out. I will end on, start on a pin dropped, and end on, and then the fire went out, I think. Um, although, the guitar piece, and all I've got are the guitar piece, and I feel a nice little sort of skippy um, drum feel with brushes for long journeys in small cars. Um, that is almost like a going away as well. That's, it's, it's, a, it's a very positive... Um, end track so I don't know when to when whether to have and then the fire went out as the end or maybe is scrubbing the fire out campfire out and then deciding to go home maybe that's what should, it should be about so these are these are all these great ideas so um, and listening back to the instrumentation also helps steer or dictate an overall style anyway uh, along with these natural sounds that I'm going to put in, um, I've been traipsing around the hills with um, uh, a camera and um, a recorder. I've got a little Tascam DR-05 here, which is, you know, it uh, does a good job. Um, anyway, but so my option was also that I might use um, uh, mono imagery for some of the tracks. Uh, maybe record a few things in mono rather than uh, stereo. Um, I quite like the idea of that, but don't know whether I'm I'm going to going to end up with that with a mono tracks um, for a few of them anyway. Um, so we got the sort of now we got this all these ideas. We got uh, it's a question of this. What would you say? Wash, rinse, repeat. I suppose. So I have a whole folder of tracks now sitting within ProLogic X. Uh, what also happens is that I may record a couple of slightly different versions with some same backing track. Um, sometimes it'll be because I can hear a different tempo or I want a different pace. Other times I might just be a bit bored with what I have. It doesn't hit me and sometimes that happens. You just you basically keep on trying to force the track to work and that's when you've got to pull back or just delete it, just stop, create another version, delete everything you got in there and keep the basics of what you, you liked, do something different, use a different effect, change the tempo, anything to pull my head out of what the track was to try and, re try and reinvigorate it. So that's another little thing that, that I'm sure lots of people do when writing 
their music. Certainly useful for me. Um, you know, and, and, and so I tried, yeah, try different sounds, adding tracks with extra pieces of music. Maybe you got too much in there, take stuff out. Um, it's at this stage where I can, um, I'm very much aware um, that I could just be sort of plastering over the cracks and, you know, this, this is the problem, it's knowing when to stop, especially if you work in isolation uh, and uh, it's a big frustration for me, which is, um, uh, I frustrate me, uh, sometimes I, 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 I do not um, know when to stop. Uh, and I'll just basically, I, I've killed some tracks that way. And what I've done is I've just taken them out of the folder, moved them into a um, another folder, and ignored them. And magically you come back like maybe a month later, you go, oh, do you know, I've got another idea for that. And all of a sudden you can reinvigorate it. So it, it is your approach. It is how you feel at the time and your your approach and how how you work these things in knowing when to stop knowing when to work is important um so really this is a, like a repeat process keep on going back into the tracks refining them uh, maybe i don't necessarily work on just one track um and i think that's the idea that um i if i feel like i've gone too much into one track and it's not working I'll just stop there hit command s bang open up another track and just step back and go okay this has a different feel to it uh, not necessarily straight away because I think you're then still in that frame of mind and that working mode and you could end up destroying the next track as well so come away cup of coffee cup of tea um, go out for a walk um, and then come back um, and you can get worn down by it and that's why the brakes are really important also the ears um, you can spend hours forcing an idea to work which just doesn't bear fruit and feels like a total waste of time uh, other times tracks will transform into something that I could never have seen um, from the and actually quite different from the original idea and that that's a that's brilliant that gives me a real buzz when that when that happens um so anyway you know it's a uh, i'm happy i can be happy with the result it's all guesswork and some rule driven form of maths maybe is it is in there with how you um apportion the sections to 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 the sort of carpet of the track but at other times that you then think hang on why am i thinking in twos fours sixes and eights right I'm, I'm gonna, not going to do this. I want this to fade across a across an, a, a three. I, I actually want, you know, you start to think, why am I just going into doing it this way? Stop, start, stop, start. Sometimes that just having a track which is two sections is re to do that on purpose is is really interesting way to work, uh, where you absolutely lock it in. But what you do over the top is quite random and different. But sometimes you might want to break it down and say, I don't. I want it to be a little bit more organic. I don't want to go, oh, here comes the chorus. Or, oh, here comes um, a, a, an eight section. Oh, well, I know where this is going to go at the end. Um, you, some, you know, you want to try and work against that sometimes and, and think and manipulate the music to still work, to not trip people up as a listener, um, but also maybe to, to think about stopping working in fours and eights um, you know redo your maths so that's something else that uh, that uh, comes to mind sometimes now at this point I'm also starting to look at album covers designs and artwork because that is as a designer of many years that's um, that's something that I can do um, as well as part of that process and and there isn't actually much difference between the artwork design photography video um, process there's not much difference between that for me and the writing of music um, 
and in fact just as a little side note when I went to um, um, this crappy little art college in Portsmouth years ago um, as soon as I started I, I up to that point I went straight from 16 a real naive 16 year old and uh, that was probably I probably not a good idea I, I think uh, you know the people were all different ages um, but coming straight out of school I think was probably not not the best option for me at the time but anyway I got in and I was always drawing and, and painting and um, uh, with the sort of skill that I had at the time as soon as I be, uh, went to art college that stopped what took over was I then started to write and think about music creatively so my music took over filled the gap of my, me not wanting to particularly draw or paint anymore I don't know why that was but but it was just I'm thankful because music took over uh, in a big way for me and has been uh, been with me throughout the whole of my life um, in my own doing things in my own way um, so anyway that, that's quite interesting yeah I, I stopped drawing as soon as I had to do it particularly as a job um, but music took over <clears throat> one wonders whether if I'd gone into music whether I would be so interested in music you know if, if I was doing music professionally um, as a job for other people in some form would I stop writing music would I have just as my outlet suddenly gone back to painting I, I don't know or illustration interesting um, <clears throat> so anyway yeah so this this is the time I start to think about artwork um, and it also helps me to complete uh, the package of what I'm trying to produce sometimes as well um, the graphics help me to formulate stronger story narratives within tracks um, so it works both ways between graphics and sound um, in fact always audio visual and of course the words themselves any and all of them can dictate or alter the other two at any point I think that is the point that you're using different pieces of inspiration to get to the end um, so I get three possible avenues of inspiration to work from um, which, which is brilliant you know that's the words the audio and the visual um, as for the ideas for what the songs are about yeah they can come from anywhere um, even if I feel I have a strong theme and as mentioned earlier they don't need to follow the camping idea literally artists are past masters of being able to construct a narrative for their own art after it's been produced um, and to me it's sometimes a bit of a cheat it's intellectualizing and it makes the whole thing seem a little bit too highbrow at times for my liking uh, I'm perfectly willing to accept that I might not understand the art properly to make that comment but those that I have studied and seen um, I have not impressed me particularly when we get to into the area of um, uh, sort of political postmodernism anyway that's another argument um, so I think a lot of a lot of this stuff is worthy of rejection from a mass public who either won't see this big story or don't get it uh, whatever the it was and that's fine as long as you have a when you create something you have your own strong idea that allows you to create the product whether someone sees it the same way um, who just listens to it uh, that's up to them they will make their own connections uh, and it's not you, you don't necessarily have to hold their hand and make it so obvious what you're doing I think that's why the the words and I, I, I'd like to think that people would get what was going on but you're you're never going to get everyone on board and you're never going to get everyone who understands your way of thinking that would be ridiculous so I'm quite happy for people to put their own narrative their own stories on it if I ever met them in the street and they asked me I would certainly go actually it's about this um, but other than that uh, you know fill your boots see get, get out of it what you want um, 
you know, I, I'm keen to lay out a story or theme and stick it, stick to it and extend it, um, or let it grow organically. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, as long as it makes sense to someone somewhere in their own way, I'm, you know, I'm happy. So as I mentioned before, yeah, knowing when to stop, you're at the stage where you're repeating these processes, trying to build a track and then remix it and then stepping back. And this is really quite a frustrating time for me. Um, you know, balancing a track, mixing it. <clears throat> it's just an endless sort of tweak and change, building up tracks, adding harmonies, double guitars, possibly levels of bass drums, triggering different effects, um, EQing so that things poke out in their own, across their own, their own little areas. Um, all these things are skills that um, you will hear on YouTube from people who are very good at being able to not only explain but you know teach you, show you why this is um, a good way of doing whatever. And I've certainly learned some very interesting um, uh, things that way on YouTube um, from a number of people. Um, so yeah, it's knowing when to stop is an important thing. Uh, coming back and reviewing is probably one of the best tools you can employ, I reckon. Uh, and because I'm not on the clock, I'll always just shut down a computer and walk away for a day or two until I think I've become sensible again and, I, and I'm able to hear it. Um, now for this album I may or may not master the tracks myself. I did with the last album but it was a, a, very much a sort of synth music only album um, and I had a few new tools and it's not perfect but um, A it saved me money and B I felt that I had more of a an ear for that. For this it's quite subtle and I don't know whether I will. Perhaps with the music being simpler and I hope I don't overcomplicate it towards the end. I want to keep it simpler but still have a fullness. So if it's simple, I'm hoping that that's fine, that actually I can handle it. But if not, I will send the master tracks off to be um, uh, dealt with by, by uh, a guy I know who's got a studio who, who would do that. Um, yeah. You know, they'll run it through much better reference equipment than I've got, with better tools. Uh, and I get some really useful feedback as well, which is good, because I do work in isolation, and actually I, I always um, um, used to having feedback uh, in my job. Uh, I don't take offence. Uh, you take the information and you deal with it depending on what's being said. Um, so feedback for the music is really useful for me. Some stuff I can ignore, some stuff is absolutely relevant and yeah, spot on, I've missed this, I'll change it. Um, it's easy to become deaf to all these elements on the track all the time. Um, and sometimes you hear things that aren't there. I've mentioned that in a previous video uh, where I, I had a different bass and it was so low in the mix I changed the bass and thought I heard the original notes playing. It wasn't there. You're just used to hearing it. You're picking out resonance from some of the other instruments that you believe is that bass. Notes weren't even there. So you become, it's very easy to become deaf and also to over sharpen things. EQing, you can't EQ for that, or I certainly can't uh, mix and EQ things for that long without having to pull back. These are just common sense. Um, points really. Um, the brain learns to adapt and ignore or absorb things that a new pair of ears will pick up. And it's as simple as that. So feedback from others is always good, it's positive and uh, I, I, I welcome it. Um, so that's, that's briefly it. I mean, as it stands, 10 campfire, campfire songs in the middle of this process. Um, it's starting to sound good, I think, um, to my ears at least. So I'll continue with this, hopefully be finished by the end of the year. Uh, I think it's reasonable to add that the lockdown that most of us have, have had to endure um, has pretty well insinuated itself somewhere within the music. Um, without going into that, I, I, 
I lost a member of the family who's very close to me um, in November, and we're now in March, and that kind of kind of makes you see things slightly differently, as it should. Um, but um, the what with COVID as well, I th uh, yeah, that kind of I think it's somewhere in there. Um, and it would be a mistake, and possibly um, is evidence that the original idea I had was strong enough to start with, um, and we really still couldn't be dislodged, even though we went through three UK lockdowns. Um, so it's probably there somewhere, but the original brief that I set myself is still there, um, and um, is is sounding good. Um, I had one little hiccup where one of my acoustic guitars, I had a, the headstock had a big crack across the back so I had to get someone to fix it and unfortunately it was a, one of my favourite acoustic guitars to record with so that stopped things for a while. But we're, we're back on track. Um, once the album is ready for release, of course, I'll look at producing a few shoestring videos in some some way uh, for some some of the tracks anyway, um, in the same manner that I did for the Happy album. So that's it. Um, uh, I hope some of this you found interesting. Um, if not, you've really wasted your time listening to this. But uh, anyway, for the rest of you. Um, you have a good day, and we'll talk soon. Okay, see you.